So, you just started doing YouTube, and your production value is not so great. You know, you may have a house behind you, but you're not really super into YouTube yet. You don't have a big wall of stuff like the, the bigger YouTubers do, or even some of the smaller YouTubers, or maybe your house is just dirty. But any way you look at it, you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on getting good production value. Because right now, YouTube's not paying you, and you're not getting much out of it, except for the satisfaction that you got your, your voice out there. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this. So, stay tuned, and you'll be surprised at how cheap it is. Okay, so, if you've got just a cell phone, or a webcam, or a tablet, or anything, a laptop, anything that's got an integrated camera, then you can do this. You'll also need a lamp or two and a couple of pieces of paper, as well as some scotch tape. And then the rest of the cost is $20 or less, depending on your area. So here we go. You're going to be able to do this right here, this green screen behind me, in 20 minutes or less. So let's take a look at what my setup looks like without the fancy background. First we come to this, complete black screen behind me. And this right here is with the uh, chroma key filter in OBS completely shut off. You can see the green screen in the back, and you didn't even know before that this was a corner right here behind me. So that goes to show you just how good it is. And now you can see I've widened the angle back to the original. Um, in OBS you have the ability to slide edges and cut off or crop parts of the video out. So beforehand you didn't see any of this. You didn't see my mic or my computer. You didn't see this wall over here. You didn't see any of that because it's a very simple two second crop. Crop in from this side, crop in from this side, and here, here we are. So, that's what it looks like without it. And this brings me to my next point. These right here, these are uh, just standard cloth that you can buy at Walmart or Target. And there's two of them. There's one here, and then there's one on the other side of the corner right here. Each of these cost me about $8.95. Now, you can totally get away with doing it for less than that. I'm doing two because I am doing it in a corner. These are also a lot longer than I need. This is three yards each. It goes floor to ceiling and I have plenty to walk on if I need to. So that's nine feet long on each of them, nine to ten, uh, depending on how they cut them, and then four foot wide. So that pretty much will cover anything you need for roughly $18. So for this next part, we're going to use those lamps and that piece of paper. Because when you're dealing with a green screen, you really need to make sure there aren't any shadows on the green screen itself. But at the same time, you don't want the light directly blasting on the green screen. And I'm going to show you why right now. So I've got this lamp right here. I'll shut it off. Okay. I've got this lamp right here. It's $9 lamp bought for my son like a year ago, but let's see what happens when we shoot the green screen Which is right here with the lamp. Okay That's what happens So to combat this because we need this because if I put this up next to me like put it up to my arm You'll start to see the green screen because you'll see the shadow from my body and you don't want that, so you need to use a lamp. You need to use the lamp to diffuse your shadow from behind you. So we're going to do that by taking this piece of paper right here, and we're going to attach it either to the lamp. Now, if you're using a lamp that uses older style bulbs instead of LEDs, you're going to have to figure out something that's a little less flammable. So. Fair warning. Um, but for now, we're this one's an LED one, so it's not going to generate a whole lot of heat. But 
So there it is without the paper. And there it is. There it is with the paper. Okay. It gives you enough light bleed through through the paper to diffuse your shadow, but not enough to cause that. So you just find a couple lamps, attach the paper as such, and then use that to diffuse the light, <clears throat> or to diffuse the light of the lamp and to diffuse your shadow with the light from the lamp. Because the last thing you want back here is shadowing, because it's gonna screw the whole thing up. <clears throat> On the subject of lighting, you also want light from above the camera, like behind the camera, so that the light passes the camera and hits you in the face and keeps most of the shadows off of your body as well. So you want your light behind the camera, you want a light behind you, ideally you also want one above you pointed down behind you, because that's going to diffuse all of the shadows out of the scene. Now, my, my setup's by far not perfect. However, for a cheap setup, it is very good. Okay, so now that we have the physical setup addressed, let's move to the software side of things. And we're gonna hop right into Streamlabs OBS Studio. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna find where it says sources on your screen. It's gonna be different because I've changed my layout. So find sources and then find this little plus button. And when you hover over it, it'll say add new source. Click that and then find video capture device and add source. Now I already have ones, but I'm gonna create a new one for the video. Okay, so there it is. We're just gonna move that over here for now so that you can see the whole screen. All right, so now what we wanna do is we want to right click on camera and go to filters all right so we've got filters up now we want to click on this plus button and in the first drop down we want to scroll down and find chroma key you can change the name if you want but it doesn't really matter as you can see now the it's set to the stock key color type as green and we don't want that because you can obviously see that it's not working so we're going to go with a custom one so click that top drop down and click custom now for a second let's just shut off the chroma key by clicking this eye over here and then we're going to open up a program called the snipping tool that is on windows and mac it's called something different on mac but that's okay but that's okay and we're just going to select a small part of the green screen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open that with Edit Paint 3D right here inside the snipping tool. Just like this. And there it is. So we're going to pick this eyedropper and we're going to move it anywhere on the green screen. Try to find a place where it's a flat color. And then click right here. And there are your values for this color. So 117, 162, and 137. So we're gonna change those values right here by clicking this to 117. Let's see what they were again, because I'm a forgetful person. 162 and 137. 162 and 137 and then we're going to turn the chroma key back on so the whole thing just disappeared right okay that's not quite what we want you may think it is but it's not because there was more than just my my uh there was more than just my green screen in there. So let's turn this down until we get the image back. All right, now, now you're seeing the image come back, right? Turned it all the way down to one. It's still kind of working. So let's start gradually turning it up until only the green screen is taken out. 
All right, that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. So the similarity right here, what I'm changing is just telling the computer what the range is between the color you chose up here and the colors it's allowed to take out. All right. Smoothness, on the other hand, is very similar to that, except it just kind of smooths the transitions between the colors. I try to keep this value as low as possible because you don't want your skin to start being part of the green screen. And uh, color spill or key color spill reduction just changes the color tone. So if I crank this up, it goes to almost grayscale, but we don't want that. So you want to try and keep that at a low value. I recommend between 1 and 100, depending on your situation. So that part's done. So now we're going to move this to the middle of the screen and I'm going to make it much, much bigger so that we can actually see what's going on. And then remember what I said earlier about cropping? We're going to see these um, white squares around the outside. What you're going to do is you're going to hold alt and then click and drag those in. And just like that, you only have the green screen now. So if I reach into it, you see my hand in the green screen. And that's all there is to it from a software side. So there you have it. Everything you need to know on how to use a green screen to increase your production value at a super low cost. If you like this video, go ahead and click that button. If you're not subscribed, please do me a favor and do that so you can see more videos like this one and the other ones that are on my channel. Also, if you have any thoughts or questions that you want answered in regards to this or any other topics, go ahead and throw them in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.